Welcome to this presentation on Engaging Nursing to Diminish Ageism. CLPNA is pleased to welcome guest speakers Dr. Sherry Delkey and Dr. Kathleen Hunter. Dr. Delkey is an Associate Professor in the Faculty of Nursing at the University of Alberta. Her program of research aims to understand how to improve nursing practice with older people. She has received international recognition as a Gerontological Nurse Educator and a Macala Teaching Award. Dr. Delkey also enjoys writing discussion papers and conducting research with her friend and colleague, Dr. Hunter. Dr. Hunter is a professor in the Faculty of Nursing at the University of Alberta as well, an adjunct professor with the Division of Geriatric Medicine. Her research interests include the interaction of continence with geriatric syndromes, falls, dementia, mobility, and hospital care for older persons. When not scheming with Dr. Dalkey on improving care for older persons, she hangs out Thursdays as a nurse practitioner with the Glenrose Continence Clinic. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Dalkey and Dr. Hunter. Thank you, Glenda. The objectives of this presentation are to discuss the prevalence of ageism in society, healthcare, and nursing, and the theories of life course and harmonious aging. We will also explore how nurses can help diminish negative perspectives of aging. In the 1960s, Dr. Robert Butler, physician and gerontologist, coined the term ageism to explain negative perceptions towards an individual based on their age. Despite recognition that ageism exists, in 2019, the World Health Organization identified that ageism is influencing the health and well-being of older persons, even decreasing lifespans, because it is insidiously integrated into cultures around the world. For some, ageism has been seen as a Western culture phenomena. Recent literature challenges this notion with the suggestion that ageism in some Eastern cultures is present, but more nuanced and less visible to those from an outsider perspective. Various international studies have reported the presence and the negative effects of ageism. For example, Healthcare costs in the United States due to health-related illness from ageism are over $63 billion a year. Researchers theorize that since growing older is associated with death, people adopt ageist attitudes and behaviors towards older persons to distance themselves from death. Ironically, Entertaining ageist attitudes and behaviors towards aging and older persons is projecting negative perceptions towards our future selves. It is common for people to have unconscious bias towards aging that is internalized and can contribute to psychological and physical illness. A systematic review of the literature related to ageism towards older persons reported that the anxiety of aging is associated with fear of death and is considered ageism directed at oneself. There are, however, organizations such as AgeWell in Canada who are mission-driven to reframe how our societies think about aging and older persons. Some suggested strategies include redefining aging to diminish othering of older persons, illuminating how social contexts and policy influence aging and how we think of older persons, and creating awareness of the need and potential to improve how we think and behave with older persons. We hope to bring to your attention to the prevalence of ageism and make suggestions on how nurses can do their part to help diminish ageist perspectives. Ageism is a complex phenomenon that includes both positive or benevolent, 
and negative or hostile stereotypes of older persons being impaired or incompetent. Benevolent ageism often involves a paternalistic pattern expressed as overly accommodative behavior towards older persons. Negative stereotypes include beliefs that growing old is linked with physical and mental deterioration, dependence, and less social value. Positive beliefs and behaviors towards older persons are not necessarily benevolent ageism, but it can be challenging to distinguish between them. For example, offering your seat on a bus to an older person is not benevolent ageism, but patronizing or overly accommodating older persons is and can decrease their sense of self-control. Ageism is far-reaching into older persons' lives. Older persons experience ageism when purchasing goods and services, in their family relationships, in the workplace, and in health and social institutions. Ageism has crept into aging theory as well. And despite criticism about the theory of successful aging for two decades, it continues to be uncritically adopted in mainstream culture. Gerontological researchers Rowe and Kahn developed the concept of successful aging from a medical perspective, in part to dispel beliefs that aging was all about pathology. However, this theory has been construed to mean that in order to be successful at aging, a person must be active, self-sufficient, and independent, living a lifestyle that would maintain cognitive and physical function, avoid disease and disability, and maintain social engagement. Social gerontologists critique the concept of successful aging as it does not consider the personal, social, economic, and political contexts of aging. The promotion of successful aging has been criticized as a new type of ageism, facilitated by the media and anti-aging products, contributing to individuals' anxiety about aging. Ageism can also cause older people to be socially excluded from mainstream society. Gerontologists suggest that older persons are at risk of social exclusion due to coexisting disadvantages, such as age-related changes, which can lead to physical limitations, loss of autonomy, loss of spouse and friends, as well as age-related discrimination. Systemic exclusion is evident in healthcare institutions that are organized to quickly treat individuals with one acute illness rather than the complexity associated with older person care that often includes exacerbation of chronic conditions as well as acute illness. Social exclusion of older persons has been defined in research as a complex process that involves the lack or denial of resources, rights, goods and services as people age and the inability to participate in the normal relationships and activities available to the majority of people across the varied and multiple domains of society. It affects both the quality of life of older individuals and the equity and cohesion of an aging society as a whole. In other words, Ageism directed towards older persons influences all of us through diminished relationships and fear of aging. Ageism exists within healthcare and nursing practice, often emerging insidiously veiled in claims of best interest or humor as a socially acceptable form of discrimination. Since older people have an increased incidence of chronic conditions with age, it is not surprising that they are the largest consumer of healthcare services, according to the Canadian Institute for Health Information. 
and nurses are likely to encounter older people in their practice in a variety of care settings. As the largest group of healthcare providers, nurses are well positioned to challenge systemic ageism in healthcare institutions. While ageism extends throughout professions and social institutions, the expectation is that nurses provide non-ageist care. Structural constraints such as skill mix and access to resources in the physical environment influences nurses' management of patients' needs. In long-term care settings, older persons have complex health and physical needs. These settings are not always physically structured or resource to fully support person-centered care. Hospital systems are for the most part structured around units with a single biomedical focus, such as cardiology, with structures and processes that do not fit the needs of the complex, frail person that stems from multiple conditions, functional needs, and atypical presentation of acute illness. The physical structures and system processes within hospital environments support the medical treatments primarily, with a secondary focus being placed on functional needs. As a result, older people are at greater risk for experiencing negative consequences, resulting in a decline in their functional ability, particularly mobility and continence. Attending to functional needs is often viewed as secondary work or something that can be delegated to less skilled healthcare workers because working with older people may be perceived as a lower occupational status. Scholars have suggested that nurses' acceptance of ageist stereotypes are in part due to seeing older people at their most vulnerable and dependent. It is concerning though, because when nurses hold negative stereotypes of cognitive and physical decline and believe that working with older people is less complex, they may fail to adequately assess and manage older people's health concerns. Research has shown that when older people's health concerns are treated as secondary, it leads to older people experiencing negative consequences related to their health concerns. On the other hand, when nurses have positive perceptions of aging and older people, they are more likely to recognize and appropriately meet their health and social needs. Function-focused care is an important aim for nurses to take with older people because it recognizes that changes in cognition, mobility, or continence may be an acute illness and in turn promotes maintenance or optimization of existing function. Given that ageism is prevalent in society, it becomes the responsibility of nursing education programs to acknowledge ageism and foster positive perceptions of aging within nursing curriculum so that nursing students have the knowledge and gerontological competencies to provide evidence-based care and can combat ageism in healthcare. Our research shows that nursing education and practicing nurses have the opportunity to diminish ageism in clinical settings by modeling respectful language and positive care practices. What nurses say and how they model care can have a lasting impact on professional learning. Reported data has shown that 47% of student nurses have witnessed age discrimination of older persons in healthcare settings. These negative clinical experiences and the lack of understanding about the care of older people often leads nursing students to express a lack of interest in working with older people. One study reported that even if they were paid more money, they would prefer not to work with older people. These negative views may be due, in part, 
to a lack of understanding about the aging process and behaviors of persons experiencing cognitive decline, not understanding that some behaviors are a type of communication related to an unmet need. For example, wandering may be an attempt to find a toilet or something to eat. Scholars have suggested that incorporating gerontological competencies into nursing curricula could enhance the ability of graduating nurses to work with older people. Gerontological competency frameworks for nursing have been developed in the United States and in Canada, yet these competencies are often not fully integrated into nursing curriculum, with many graduates not having the knowledge to care for older people, despite the existence of these gerontological competencies. This is another example of ageism. The CLPNA has included gerontological competencies in entry to practice education since the early 2000s. The competency profile for licensed practical nurses in Alberta includes gerontological competencies focused on the knowledge of the aging process, both physically and cognitively, encompassing the assessment and care of older persons, including those with complex needs. Gerontological nursing refers to evidence-based nursing practice that includes the physical, social, and psychological needs of older persons and is not tied to a particular care setting. Nurses encounter older persons in diverse settings, such as in the community, their homes, residential care, or hospital settings. Older persons require nursing care that is tailored to their needs, regardless of where they are accessing health care. Thus, gerontological nursing competencies are required by all nursing graduates. The Canadian Nurses Association offers certification in gerontological nursing for LPNs, and the Canadian Gerontological Nursing Association has developed gerontological standards and entry to practice gerontological competencies to support nursing knowledge in the care of older persons. The six standards that underpin gerontological nursing care are relational care, safe care, ethical care, artful care, socio-political engaged care, and evidence-informed care. Nurses understand that these six gerontological standards often overlap and therefore are all considered in the planning and provision of care. Research has shown that the lack of gerontological prepared nursing faculty, insufficient content, and learning experiences that perpetuate stereotypes of aging in nursing programs create negative experiences for older people. At the same time, there is a lack of nurses with gerontological expertise to work with increasing numbers of older people. These challenges could be related to not enough nursing faculty interested in gerontological nursing because it is mistakenly interpreted to mean working with older people in long-term care settings. Minimizing the importance of nurse and older person interactions in other settings, including acute care. This could be because often student nurses' first clinical experience is working in a long-term care setting where the majority of residents are older people. That new nursing graduates are often surprised at the complexity and prevalence of older people in acute care and community settings reflects the need for nurses to be adequately prepared to understand how to work with older people and appreciate that working with older people or gerontological nursing occurs in multiple settings. Despite widespread ageism in society, it is not shared by all and can be overcome. Researchers interviewed people over the age of 90 to determine their perceptions of what a good old age was like. 
The older persons reported the importance of their personal relationships with friends and families and interdependency, often demonstrated by caring for their grandchildren that contributed to their perceptions of a good old age. Positive intergenerational relationships can provide more positive perspectives of aging and older persons. Scholars who have conducted a systematic review and meta-analysis of intervent interventions to diminish ageism have found that education, intergenerational contact, or a combination of these have decreased self-reported ageism, particularly among females, adolescents, and younger adult education groups. With their pivotal position on the healthcare team, nurses can be active participants in diminishing negative perspectives of aging. Nurses can also make a positive difference in helping to reduce ageism, in part because of the close connections between the commonly accepted holistic perspective that nursing is well known for and gerontological nursing. Making the links between nurses' strength in viewing individuals from a holistic lens and the theories of life course and harmonious aging could encourage positive perspectives towards aging and older persons. Holism recognizes the significance of the biopsychosocial approach to nursing practice with individuals and the importance of context. A biopsychosocial approach means viewing individuals' physical, mental, social, and spiritual needs. A holistic view of people and a biopsychosocial beings, even if it's not labeled as holism, means that individuals need to be included in planning and making decisions about their own health care. Alternatives to what has become the dominant discussion of successful aging exist. In 1998, Elder developed a life course theory because the developmental approach to understanding birth to adulthood did not adequately re represent older people. He explained that historical events contribute to the shaping of families, education, and work and thus choices people make in their lives are done within the constraints of social structures and culture. Other scholars further suggest that a life course perspective added to the notion of successful aging would acknowledge aging as a dynamic, lifelong process. Within this view, older people are viewed as social beings influenced by significant people in their lives and by social determinants of health, such as income, environment, and other political structures. The life course perspective recognizes that life stages, one of which is older life, are fluid, allowing for a variety of patterns within a life course. Nurses who study the developmental stages of individuals, including a more open perspective of the later stages of life, have a greater appreciation for the interconnection of biology, psychology, and socio-environmental factors that influence the life course of older persons. Understanding the components of diversity, context, family and lived experience fit within a holistic view of the older person and the influences these components have on their lives. This life course perspective recognizes that each older person has their own thoughts, feelings and history, encouraging nurses understanding of a generation much older than themselves and fosters a more positive perspective of aging and the many factors that encompass person-centered care. Another alternative or extension to successful aging is referred to as harmonious aging. Harmonious aging incorporates Eastern cultural ways of being 
and spirituality, suggesting that an older person's value is not dependent on activity and civic engagement. It includes structural forces and individual agency by allowing each person to interpret what aging means to them based on their positioning within social, cultural, and political contexts. In other words, aging does not need to fit into an ageist box of success. Rather, the majority of older persons live in community and their subjective well-being or happiness increases with age. Based on our research, harmonious aging fosters holistic ideas of allowing individuals to be engaged in defining their view of aging and by extension, their view of the health care they desire. Considering life course and harmonious aging perspectives will normalize the universal truth that we are all aging. This has the potential to improve communication among the generations and improve perspectives about aging and older people. Greater understanding about the diversity of aging and the context that have influenced older persons encourages nurses to care for older persons more holistically and with dignity, which would ultimately improve older people's experiences. Improving older persons' experiences is like paying it forward. We all are aging, and if we are to have a different experience when we grow older, it is necessary to diminish stereotypes about aging now and work towards inclusion of older people in social and healthcare institutions. Based on our research, we suggest that nurses support the inclusion of older people in all types of healthcare settings as part of gerontology. We believe that nurses can support a life course and harmonious view of aging in which the social, political, and environmental context of individuals are viewed as part of the holistic aging trajectory. Living these perspectives can have practical implications such as considering and resisting ageism, maintaining and optimizing the function of older persons in your care, and considering responsive behaviors as a form of communication about an unmet need. As the largest group of healthcare professionals, nurses are well positioned to diminish ageism and improve care of older persons. We encourage each of you to become a positive system influencer by recognizing and overcoming ageism in nursing. Together, we can improve the care experience of older persons. Thank you for joining us for this presentation on engaging nursing to diminish ageism. If you have any further questions, please go to the CLPNA website, click on contact, then ask CLPNA, fill out the form and submit. Thank you.